On a day that started like any other, the morning quickly unraveled into a series of minor misfortunes. My coffee machine, usually reliable, chose today to malfunction, spluttering to a halt with a grumble, leaving me with a half-filled mug of lukewarm disappointment. As if in solidarity, the toaster burned my bread to an unrecognizable crisp. But these inconveniences were trivial compared to the gaping emptiness I felt upon realizing that Milo, my golden retriever, was missing. The gate out back usually secured was ajar, an oversight from last night's distracted trash run. As the day progressed, it only spiraled further. Every street corner whispered his name with no answer. Every park echoed with the ghost of his barks. The community rallied, eyes peering under bushes and behind bins, but dusk approached with no sign of him. My home felt alien without Milo's joyful chaos, his tail thumps against the furniture, his quiet snores from his favorite spot by the couch. Exhaustion took hold and as I finally succumbed to sleep my mind refusing to shut down conjured a vivid dreamscape. In this lucid state I found myself walking through a forest shrouded in mist, a place that felt both foreign and intimately familiar. Then as if the fog itself had dreamt him up, there was Milo, his coat glistening under the ethereal moonlight, his eyes sparkling with the same mischievous twinkle that had always lightened my darkest days. Our reunion was surreal. I ran to him and he to me and when we met his weight against my chest and his happy bark filled the void the day's anxiety had carved in my heart. We didn't speak, no words were needed. Our connection, transcending the bounds of reality, communicated everything. He was okay, he was safe even if not physically with me. As we walked through the dream, a path lit by the silver glow of the moon, Milo seemed to lead me, showing me scenes from his adventures, chasing spectral butterflies and frolicking in celestial meadows. The dream's tapestry wove scenes of joy and surreal peace, blending past memories with the ethereal present. As dawn's first light crept into my room, the dream gently loosened its hold. I awoke to a world less colorful without Milo physically in it, yet the vivid memory of our reunion brought a new sense of comfort. The pain of loss lingered but was tempered by the assurance that Milo's spirit was still vibrant, exploring realms beyond my reach. As I rose from bed, the residue of the dream clung to me, a warm blanket woven from threads of solace and sorrow. I moved through the day with a lighter step, the weight of grief lessened by the night's ethereal journey. Though Milo could no longer share my physical space, the bond we shared was unbroken, merely transformed. In quiet moments I could still feel his presence, a comforting echo in the chambers of my heart. Days turned into weeks and weeks into months. The pain of loss gradually gave way to acceptance and a new normal. The emptiness that once echoed in the halls of the house was slowly filled with the subtle sounds of life once again. The chirping of birds outside the window, the sound of rain tapping on the roof, even the hum of the refrigerator became a comforting symphony of normality. I found joy in small things, like the aroma of freshly brewed coffee in the morning, the warmth of the sun on my skin during an afternoon walk, or the satisfaction of a well-cooked meal. The house started to feel like home again, albeit a different one. The memories of Milo were no longer a source of pain, but a treasure chest of precious moments, always there to revisit when I needed a reminder of our shared love. And then, one day, a new chapter began. I brought home a puppy, a tiny furry bundle of joy and energy. His eyes were full of curiosity and mischief, his tail a constant blur of motion. He was not a replacement for Milo, for no one could ever take his place but a new companion, a new source of love and laughter. The puppy, whom I named Max, brought a different kind of chaos to the house. Toys scattered on the floor, tiny paw prints on the kitchen tiles, the occasional accident that required cleanup. But this chaos was welcome, a sign of life and energy. It was healing in its own way, a balm to the still lingering wounds of loss. His presence was a new beginning, a promise of shared adventures and unconditional love. And in his eyes, I could see a reflection of Milo, a reminder that while life moves forward, the bonds we form are timeless and unbreakable. Even as life moved on, Milo's memories remained etched in the corners of the house and the chambers of my heart. There was a certain comfort in reminiscing about the times we spent together. The way he would wag his tail when I returned home, his playful antics in the park, his gentle snores as he dozed off at my feet while I read. I could almost hear his soft woof of greeting when I opened the door, almost feel his warm weight against my leg as we watched TV together. The new puppy, Max, brought his own charm to the house. 
His boundless energy, his curiosity about every nook and cranny, his tiny bark that sounded more like a squeak, all brought smiles to my face. But they also triggered memories of Milo. The way Max tilted his head at a new sound reminded me of Milo's inquisitive nature. His clumsy attempts at climbing the sofa were a throwback to Milo's own puppy days. His excited yelps when I prepared his food brought back memories of Milo's impatient dance around the kitchen. But it was in these moments of reflection that I realized something. Milo was not physically present, but his spirit lived on. In the warmth of the afternoon sun that he loved to bask in, in the rustle of the leaves in the park where we used to walk, in the comfort of the home that we had shared, his memory was a constant companion, a thread that linked the past to the present. Milo was not just a pet, he was family. His memories are not just reminders of what was, but a testament to the love we shared. They are a part of this home, woven into its fabric, and as Max grows, he too will add his own threads to this tapestry of memories because that's what family is, a collection of shared moments, of love, of laughter, and yes, of loss, but most of all of enduring bonds that time cannot erase. And in that sense, Milo is still here in the echoes of his laughter, in the warmth of his memories, and in the love that he left behind. Change is the only constant, they say, and life is a series of adjustments. I found this to be true as I navigated my way through the shifts that Max brought into my life. With his lively spirit and his insatiable curiosity, he turned my world upside down. And yet somehow, he also managed to set it right. Max's playful barks echoed through the house, filling the silence left behind by Milo. He had a knack for finding trouble, whether it was tangling himself up in the curtains or knocking over the trash can. His antics were a constant source of amusement, a welcome distraction from the lingering sadness. I watched as Max grew, his legs getting longer, his bark deeper. His clumsy puppy gait gave way to a confident stride, his tiny whimpers transformed into assertive woofs. His growing pains were my growing pains, his triumphs my triumphs. With every new day, he learned something new, and so did I. I learned to let go of the past, and embrace the present. I learned that while Milo would always hold a special place in my heart, there was room for Max too. I learned that it was okay to move on, to forge new bonds without betraying old ones. Max's boundless energy was a stark contrast to Milo's calm demeanor, his playful nature a sharp departure from Milo's mature wisdom. And yet, in his own unique way, Max was just as endearing, just as lovable. As I watched Max chase his tail in the yard, I felt a sense of peace wash over me. The loss of Milo was still a tender wound, but Max's presence was a soothing balm. I realized that this was the cycle of life, of love and loss, of joy and sorrow. Milo was gone but his memory lived on, and now, Max was here, adding his own chapters to the story of my life. Life goes on, with or without us. And in the grand scheme of things we are but fleeting moments in the universe's eternal dance. But in those fleeting moments, we love, we lose, we laugh, we cry, and in the process we create memories that outlive us. They become a part of the tapestry of time. And in that sense we are eternal. Just like Milo, just like Max, just like love. As the sun set on another day, painting the sky with hues of orange and pink, I found myself smiling at Max's antics. His playful energy filled the house, his presence a constant reminder of life's vibrant rhythm. I watched as he chased his shadow in the fading light, his happy barks echoing through the yard. His joy was contagious, his spirit uplifting. Max was a bundle of love, wrapped in fur, and his love was a gift, a beacon of light in the darkness. As I watched him I felt Milo's memories warming my heart, his love still a part of me. Through Max I was learning to find joy in the present while cherishing the past. His curiosity, his zest for life, his unwavering loyalty, they were all reminders of the beautiful bond that humans and dogs share. A bond that transcends time and space. That endures even in the face of loss. Every day Max and I grew closer. His antics filled the house with laughter, his love filled it with warmth. He was not just a pet, he was family. And in his eyes, I saw a reflection of the love that Milo had given me. The love that I had given Milo. It was a comforting thought, a poignant reminder that while people and pets may come and go, love endures. It's a cycle, a beautiful cycle of love and loss, of joy and sorrow. As I watched Max chase his tail in the yard, I realized that in the end, it's not about the pain of loss, but the joy of having loved and been loved in return. And in that sense we are all part of the same cycle, all part of the same story. Milo was gone, but his love lived on, and now Max was here, 
adding his own chapters to the story of my life. The cycle continues and with it the journey of love and life.